Hello, hello. Welcome back to React Quickly. My name is Azad. I am the author of React Quickly, the book that you're reading. So in the previous chapter, we talked about the benefits. We talked about component-based architecture. And we even built a short application, the Hello World application. Oh my God. What are we going to do if we not build a Hello World application, right? So the way we did that, we used an element, a React element. So let's take it as the next step. Let's take it a step further and see how we can nest certain elements. Because when we're building websites, we're building menus, we're building widgets, we're building lists and grids and tables and other stuff like captures and autocompletes and forums. We are most of the times we're nesting different elements, right? So this is very, very important topic how to nest elements using React. And doing that in a regular, regular JavaScript without any JSX. After doing that, we will shift the gear and actually look uh, in two categories of React elements. So the first category is the standard HTML elements or tags. React has a wrappers. It has wrappers for the standard elements. So basically, Virtually all of the standard DOM elements, such as a tag, p tag for paragraph, heading tags, section, table, ul, ol, etc., etc., all of them, virtually all of them implemented in React. But then there is also a second category, they're called component classes or custom elements, basically. So we are defining a class, a component class, and then when we instantiate it, it becomes a React element. But the class of that React element, it's not a standard HTML, it's our custom class. And in the end, eventually, when you implement the render method of each uh, component class, you would eventually have to use the standard HTML, but also you can use in between, you can use more composable classes because we compose them. So this is very, very important uh, topic. This is basically how React allows us to build uh, simpler systems, to build simpler UIs and applications, the applications which are more scalable in the developmental sense, because we are building components. We're building components, and those components, they serve a specific purpose. It's not like we have one gigantic component that does a lot, a lot of things. Most of the time we have granular components that do just one, maximum two things. The last very important topic in this chapter is how you work with properties. Think about as properties as certain input. You feed that input into your component class when you create an instance of that class, create a React element, and for usually for each different set of input for each different set of properties we would have a different output we would have a different ui so the output is ui the input of properties and that's basically the whole idea about react that's how it started react component is a simple function on the input you have some properties on the output you have some ui that's it nothing complex very simple function the power of this simplicity is that the output could be predictable because the function that's black box in the middle basically whatever input you have you can predict the output this is the power of react the power of its simplicity so this is an important topic it's a very short chapter go ahead and uh, go through those three sections and see how you can implement component classes in react using regular javascript without jsx and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Have a nice day.